Me gusta como bailas Hoy no más Y mueves la cintura Como shake it, baby, shake it. Me gusta como gozas Oh, yeah Me gusta tu hermosura Oh, you're beautiful, man Quiero bailar contigo I wanna dance all night Bailamos esta cumbia Una cumbia, baby, toda la noche Quiero poquita salsa Una poquita de salsita Y toda la dulzura Y toda la dulzura, mamá, asusta, me aguanta Cumbia con salsa Qué bárbaro, asustame one time. Welcome to hashtag PVT Wednesday Night Live. I'm Rock and Roll James. Un poquito está Jordan. This show is brought to you by Dr. T's Primary Care for Men and Women. Sí, este están batallando en la en la recámara, sabes, haciendo lo que tienen que hacer con la mujer y pues ah uh, y quieres que Tú sabes que te dan tortillas recién hechas en la mañana, papá, porque estás haciendo un trabajo muy bueno. Dr. T's Primary Care dot com. 956-441-2188. Pregúntales el Trimex. You'll be an Olympian in the bedroom. ¿Cómo se llama lo que se ganó aquella Bruce Jenner, el triathlon o qué chingadera? Yeah, tri triathlon. Te vientas tres en una noche, papá, con el Trimex. A triathlon, Papa? Yeah, because there's three orifices. See. Sí. <laughs> oh <my laughs> so, <laughs> so there, you're a triathlete. <laughs> <laughs> Top and uh, two bottles. Chance que te dejen con dos, pero no tres. Hay uno que es exit, no entrance, carna. ¿Entiendes la onda? Well, when you have Dr. T, everything's an entrance. <laughs> <laughs> like you're bulletproof. <laughs> Dr. T's primary care for men and women. Pero no más que se dé cuenta la baby dog que tienes el la el trimix. Te va a pedir que le des un three day notice antes de que tú sabes lo utilices. So, so she can uh, stock up on uh, baby oil. Para que duerma tres días antes de la revolqueada que la vas a dar, papá. Yeah. Oh my God. Y ahí pues va a tener so, como tres días de recovery. So she can call uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield. Hey. <laughs> oh my God. Do you guys cover uh, uh, fatal wounds? <laughs> <laughs> Dr. T's primary care for men and women. Man. También quiero darle las gracias a Chorizo de HH, papá. Susta, me aguanta. La familia enojosa. Same great taste you grew up with. Leaner, less fat than others. Nice kick, not too spicy. Doesn't turn into mush. No me gusta el chorizo que lo vientas al sartén y se hace bien mush y comienza a saltar por todas partes. Toda la estufa se llena de grasa y tu camisa y todo. Tu apron, todo. Whatever you're wearing, ¿verdad? Con este no tienes que batear. It's the leanest in town, papá. Not just for breakfast. También te vientas un chorizo con papas en la noche. En la mediodía también. Unos taquitos con frijolitos. No, ve qué bárbaro. Chorizo de HH. Ask for it at your favorite supermarket. HEBs and all the local neighborhood supermarkets también, all right? También quiero darle las gracias a Myra Flores. Uh, we had a good time at Tigres del Norte with Myra. It was Myra. so much fun. It was so much este, fun. She had a blast. We all had a blast. It was puro VIP. So uh, she's running for Congress in November and... She's asking for your vote, and she's from here, from the Rio Grande Valley, San Benito, papa. Let's oh, hear that. Yeah. Let's see that commercial, baby. My father taught me in America, if you work hard, anything is possible. I was born in Burgos, Tamaulipas, Mexico, but at six, we immigrated to the RGV. We grew up modest, working in the cotton fields. Honest pay for honest work. But Washington liberals are killing the American dream, attacking oil and gas jobs and causing prices to skyrocket. I'm Myra Flores, and I approve this message because I will protect Texas workers and their wallets. Let's stall. We'll have Myra on again. In summer, probably she'll come on by. Right? Maybe around fall, September. Ya pa' cuando estamos en el final lap. Antes de November, ¿verdad? Yes. That'll be a very important... I hope you all vote. Yes. You know, every year... Every election year, they always say, this is the most important one, but, I, you know, it's true. Every four years, it becomes more and more important. Ladies and gentlemen, Chaz Corona. How you doing, everyone? Public service announcement. That's right, Chaz Corona, the Duke of debauchery and the he-man of hedonism, here to keep you company. <laughs> yeah. And uh, tomorrow, big day for me. 
the entire time that I've been here on PVT, mm-hmm. I've been wearing braces. And tomorrow, these bad boys are going to come off. Woo! So Woo! I, I could even become even more elaborate. <laughs> uh, can you imagine that? Yeah. As long as your teeth don't come off with the braces, bro. You uh, that's a good be, point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the whole thing, it beca- you just see the little. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to finally be able to comer carne, bro. Yeah, so I'll, finally I won't have to remove the ramen noodles from my braces, and it looks like a magician. <laughs> from two weeks ago. <laughs> so uh, my braces will be removed, and I am grateful. And to think this whole time on PVT I've been wearing braces. Yeah, four years. Four wow. years, man. Yeah. And it shows you how they work in Mexico. But te falta, no, te tal vez fail. All right, come on. All right, went well, no, no, no. So you did them in Mexico or what? I did them in. I'm not going to do them in the USA. Are you crazy? No, carnal. You go to so, Prague or what? I go to Prague, and uh, which turns out even more expensive because then I end up buying the toys of Chespirito. <laughs> <laughs> Prague, and, ladies and gentlemen, no Prague problem. is progreso, nuevo progreso. progreso. Yeah, not Prague, Italy, or it's France. It's right across uh, the border from uh, progreso. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You park, and you pay your dollar. ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo está? And then what, here's my impression of me. Crossing the bridge, all right? So, th- there's me. Here, here's, what, here's what I hear. Oven! 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 That's classic. Oven! 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 <laughs> In a wheelchair or what? <laughs> no, that's no, me. No, he's walking. That's me walking across the bridge, uh, yeah. and oh they're God. yelling to throw, uh, like, quarters. And yeah, stuff. from the bottom, and they got, yeah. like, big old sticks with cups they on them, right? They have a Clorox upside down. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. On a bamboo. Yeah, and you just throw the change in and there. They, and I like to walk across. Uh-huh. Because they call me Hoven. Uh-huh. Yeah. 51. <laughs> they call me Hoven. <laughs> <laughs> From a distance. I'm 51. <laughs> Those guys know how to work it, right? <laughs> wow, they call it. Here comes a really old fucker. Hey, Hoven! 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 No le hace caso a los gray. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that other voice is uh, Jackson Mysterio. Are you alleging Jackson Mysterio, Baba? Yeah, Pajo Jax, how you doing? ¿Cómo está, rock and roll? ¿Cómo estás? Aquí estamos. <laughs> Jax, Aquí buddy, estamos directamente de la, de la triple A. Yeah. ¿Cómo estás, Chaz? No, un saludo para toda la raza que nos, está, que nos está viendo. Aquí estamos en Hashtag PVT. Saludos para todos los que están en el chat zone. Shout out to George Ochoa, Big John 512, Gabe Mosqueda, Sergio González, Kennedy, Texas, Roman Murrieta. Senior from Tolleson, Arizona. Franco R. from the Windy City. I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure it's uh, Chicago. Chicago. <laughs> so uh, Rosie Garcia from Richland, Washington. Erika de Gall- Delgado from Garland, Texas. Julio Gonzalez and Armando Llamas Gonzalez, Texas. Just Shout out to you guys and thank you for following Hashtag PVT. And remember to subscribe to the members only perks. Yeah, we'll tell you about that in just a bit. Let me add three more. I don't want to forget these people. Oh, from they- McGregor, Texas, Georgia from Carlsbad, New Mexico, Isa Col, Col- Evo, and then finally from Rosenberg, Texas, Ryan Guerra. Oh, Thank you for ha- watching. And in today's episode, if you have any questions for any of us here, yeah, because we're we are the ones here. <laughs> so if you have a question for Jax or Rock or Rally or myself, put them in the chat. Yeah, though. yeah and we're totally transparent, right? So we're not going <laughs> to bullshit you. Okay. All then. Hoven. <laughs> Hoven. No, dude, I, Hoven. I, I love going to Progreso. I love going to Progreso. I go get my teeth uh, fixed and mm-hmm. clean and everything over there. Yeah. And um, and and that's the, you know, it's a little bit sad, you know, when I, when you go and and you see like the little manitas and shit. I feel like I'm walking into hell, you know, because I imagine like that's what hell is like, you know, the souls trying to pull you. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's it's very sad. The, what I think when I go over there, I always think like, man, this could have been us like you know if our grandparents hadn't done anything like i would have been but realistically i would have worked at a like 
Puerto Vallarta or something. <laughs> <laughs> Alcapulco. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. yeah. I haven't out. been to the other side in a long time, dude. It's been a long while. No, it's, you know what's good over there in the Progreso? The lonchecitos. They have some lonchecitos. Yeah, those corner ones uh, where they, they, they fry the bread and then they yeah. put carne picadita con repollo y la chingada. Oh, no yeah. Me that, la boca that shit's fucking delicious. Pero tenemos chingo de tiempo que yo no voy para México, bro. I haven't been out there in a while. And... uh este, ever since I stopped drinking. <laughs> <laughs> That's a long time. Because, <laughs> dude, I had a pistea, carnal, sales bien bombo de a madre, vato. I remember one time I freaking, I went to Nuevo Progreso and I started drinking. And I went with a guy that had won like a thousand dollars with the radio station, right? He went and picked up the money and he said, hey, Rock, what time you get out? I get I get off at 12, dude, around 11 o'clock. Yeah. Oh, pa Mexico, que carnal. So me fui con él, güey. With the contest winner? Yeah, he okay. wanted to treat me to go party. Well, so we went to Mexico, and we started drinking and drinking, and then I, I walked out, and the wind hit me, man, and I just like, I don't I don't remember much. I remember I went into Arturo's. <laughs> There's like a place called Arturo's over there. It's like a restaurant, one of those fancy restaurants mm -hmm. in Mexico, and I went into the bathroom, and I was I couldn't, like, my I was blurry on the mirror, you know? And so I didn't, the, my, my friend had taken off. And I was out there with no ride. So I said, what the hell? I'm just going to get on the side of the road and hitchhike. Wait a minute. The, contest winner, the contest winner bailed on you? Yeah, man. Oh, wow. Pues andamos hasta el tronco, you know what I mean? And so I was on the side of the road hitchhiking. And uh, a Suburban picks me up. And it was a, a family from Raymondville. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> and they took me across, bro. They 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 brought me across about six in the afternoon, six thirty. And uh, the lady, I was sitting in the back with the mom and the daughter. And the, and <laughs> you look like a family member. The son and the father were in the front, and I'm like sitting in there. And the lady, la señora, bien linda gente, she pulls out a like. A bag and she pulls out lunches and she starts giving oh, us our lunches. Shit. And she gave me a lunch. All right, I ate the lunch. And then we went across, right? And uh, they said, ¿Dónde quieres que te dejemos? I told them, Déjenme en la cantina en Mercedes. Ay, <laughs> yes, oh my I, went, I went into the cantina, man. I had about a quarter. And I had a quarter on me. And I walked out of that cantina at closing time, wasted. <laughs> and I still had the quarter in my pocket, dude. <laughs> it was. Crazy stories, man. I, I'm, but that was one of you know, I, I haven't bien, been to Mexico in a long time. Bien fumigado de fumigado, amare. carnal. I mean, one of the most madre. intoxicated moments of my life, dude. Ya imagino los pinches ojitos todos. Las pinches estrellitas. <laughs> and if, if, you look, tunes. if you see the videos of me interviewing Selena with all the long hair, that's the way I look back then when that happened. So. Oh, shit. So, anyway, on, behind the scenes, we have the lovely... Producer Rally. Hello, hello. Shout out yeah. to all the ladies on the chat zone already. Thank you guys. So um we've got something very special, folks. And um Can let me say hi to a super chat. He's okay. like boom. Thank you for the super chat. Thank you. Michael Garcia, we appreciate the super chat, even though it's just us humble PVT folk uh without uh by ourselves. So thank you for the super chat. So um We've got a new members only section Yay. that you can join. Okay, now I hadn't done this and I, and before. I start. We started doing the live. The reason we started doing the live shows, ladies and gentlemen, is because of COVID. Mm -hmm. Everything was shut down. Spring break, twenty twenty. Uh, my wife, she wasn't going to go back to work. I was going to work because I was an essential working at the radio station, and I had to keep the people informed about what's going on, where the people they could go, they needed help, and all that kind of stuff. And I'd get home and I told my wife that first day, I, I told my wife, this is crazy. This is totally, you know, freaking crazy that we have to stay in shelter. You know, we can't go anywhere into the whole United States. So I said, why don't we go live on YouTube? And that's when we started PVT live. But before that, I had already started doing uh, some interviews, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. Pre-recorded. Yeah. One of my very first interviews was Chris Perez. And the picture you see behind us... Okay, with uh, me and Chris Perez, like the stepbrothers. It's right next to the portrait back here. You've seen it before. That was part of a photo shoot that I did with uh, Chris because Chris called me up and he said, Rock, I have these people from L.A. and they want me to start doing a podcast, a weekly podcast. I said, oh, okay. And he says, and I told them that I wouldn't do it unless you were part of it. 
because I trust you, you know, in, in doing something like this. I said, okay, well, I tell you what, man, I got a YouTube channel. I've been wanting to do some interviews. Why don't you come down to the house? You can stay at my pad and we'll do an interview. Just me and you one-on-one -on -one, and then we'll take a photo shoot and then we'll have something to show the people in LA. And if they like it, you know, it'll work, you know, it'll be like a, like our demo, you know? And he said, okay. So he came down, we did the interview. Uh, we did the photo shoot. We got a lot of cool pictures and uh, it never happened. <laughs> it never happened. But when I did the interview with Chris, I said, you know what? This is cool. I'm going to start doing interviews. So then I did Jesse Turner. And if you see the first Jesse Turner video I did, I did it in episodes. I was putting episodes because I needed content. So I'd cut the two hour interview, an hour and a half in 15, 10, 15 minute episodes. And I'd upload them every day with a cliffhanger at the end. And the subscribers started building up because they wanted to see what the continuation, right? Mm -hmm. And so I started doing that. And the reason I wasn't doing these live things is because we had a band. We have a band, Whiskey D. And we were playing every freaking weekend all over the place. I didn't have time. It was just overwhelming. But that being... Yeah, it was super overwhelming. So we started doing this live thing. And those one-on-ones, I have Mike Gonzalez when his uh, dad Jimmy died. And mm -hmm. I mean, really, really cool, in-depth, emotional type of interviews, man, where we really get down to the nitty-gritty. So... I just started thinking, why don't I start doing those again? And I have. I started doing them again, folks. And they're special interviews for members only, okay? So if you have an Android phone, and we're going to show you some clips right now. And you know what? Let's show them the clips, and then we'll tell you how you can become a member, all right? Mm -hmm. All right? So the first clip is Mario Marichalar. He is uh, the former singer for Ramon Ayala. And we really, man, he's got an amazing story. His wife and him, the way they got together is crazy. But uh, they were involved in a big old cartel and Mexican soldier oh. shootout in Mexico when they were playing for a cartel leader. And uh, and we really got in depth on that. So here's a little piece of that, so you could check it out. What you could see for members only. Let's check it out. Hello. Were you with them when that uh, that episode happened in Mexico and they yeah, they got raided and yeah. you got? Were you in, in jail too? We, we were there for like t for like ten days. As to, How was that experience for you? I mean, it, it, it did, was, it, did it scare you? Yeah, it scared me a lot. Yeah. It scared me a lot, but it, it, it was terrible because uh, you're in a country where there's a well, there's a lot of corruption and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And those, I was scared that que, que they were gonna. They can do whatever they want over there. Uh, I was scared that they were going to tell me, you know, vas 15 años, so vas 20 años, because you were there and todo eso. Yeah, yeah, 15 son 15 y 20 son 20. Exactly. Yeah. Entonces, entonces yo pensaba, I don't know if we're going to make it out here. And you mean Cava, and I would pray. And I would tell Copa Ramon, hey, get on your knees, let's pray. Para salir de aquí. And, but I always knew that we we some of the músicos, we were musicians. We're nothing nothing more than that. Yeah, and this, higher, higher band, higher band, yeah. And, I, and like I would tell, uh, me hacían bastantes preguntas, and I would tell them, hey, we're not, when someone calls for a gig, we're not asking them, what do you do for a living? Yeah. Yes, they, they, te mandan el anticipo, they fly you out, and you're out there working. Yeah, but you knew, you know, when you got there, who they were yeah but you can't you can't just run away no you're afraid that they, they might shoot you or, or something yeah. might happen so you have to stay there and, uh, and work but that was the, uh, the way I saw it but it was uh, it was really scary because there was a lot of alacera it was a terrible thing I te voy a every detail and, and, and I can just imagine when I heard that happen to you guys I was like man I'm surprised it hadn't happened before you know uh, it had to happen that way yeah I always I always I've always said that it, it tenía que pasar that way because if not maybe Maybe it was going to be worse. Maybe they were, they, we were going to get killed. And so you all were performing while when the when the when the party got started. Ta, 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 and the, it was the Mexican military going into that man. So uh, you know, creo, like, creo que they were they told us that the soldiers they were just driving by there. But uh, los pistoleros or sicarios that they call them over there, the the señor Beltran Leiva, they they got scared or whatever, and they they panicked. They started shooting, and so the soldiers started yeah, shooting that's back. That's started. Yeah. Uh, and I remember we were playing. So it could have been a avoided maybe right? yeah, I could have been avoided shot, yeah. we were playing a, una canción El Puño de Tierra actually and what time was this like at 10 at night it, it was 2 in the morning it, it was uh, closer to 2 in the morning so 
that's you know I've done so many interviews. That's probably one of the most compelling interviews I've ever done. His story is amazing, Mario Marichalar. So the next video, the next clip, we're going to show you the clips of the interviews we've already got. Mario's already up in our membership club already. So if you become a member today, you see it right away. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to upload this one. This guy's a promoter, Jim Luna, out of Angleton, Texas. He's been a music promoter for about, since 1975. So he's going on 50 years. And his very first show was Little Joe, dude. <laughs> So he talks to us about this, man. It was a, it was a classic concert. A baile, actually. There weren't any concerts back then. And I'm baile, so check this one out. And uh, you've been uh, doing concert promotions for a long time in the Houston area. Yeah. Este, ¿Qué tantos años tiene ya en este pedo, Dan? Bueno, I'm going on 48 years, going on 50 years. Yeah, man. I started yeah. when I was 21 years old. Más antes hacían los bailes, right? We didn't sí. do concerts. Pero yeah. bailes. I started uh, my first show. I did in Angleton on a Thursday night, which was unheard of in those mm-hmm. days. It was Saturday night. It was like two dollars to get in, but I, you know, I said if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it right. Yeah. Through her little Joe. Okay. When he was just changing names from the Latin ears to La Familia, uh-huh. and that, uh, I brought him on a Thursday night, and oh. I charged ten dollars. Never heard a five dollars presale ten at the, at the door. Well, they bought all the presale tickets out. So. <laughs> Yeah, and I said, man, this is what I got to do, man. Yeah. So we're talking 1975? <clears throat> so, no, no. I, I graduated in 74, and so it was probably about 79, 78, 79. Something graduated like 74 de donde? De Angleton, Texas. Angleton, Wildcats. Wildcats. The Wildcats. 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 Oye, cuando estás en la escuela, que entras a sports, estás en la música, en qué No, bro, yo no puedo ni tocar a... Spaghetti, dog. Tocas el radio bien, güey. Toco el radio todo mal. No, I I was an athlete, but I I played baseball. Okay. And I boxed from the time I was eight till I was yeah. about 27, I think. Yeah. Sí. Yeah. How was it growing up in the late 60s, early 70s? You know what? I didn't live a sheltered life. I mean, we were out, you know, at that time, you know, you didn't come in till the lights were out, man. Mm. We didn't have any problems that... I am a Santis in the back in those days. It wasn't like like it is now, man. We slept with our doors open. I'm sure that's an old cliche. You hear that a lot from people my age, but it's true. That's an awesome interview with uh, Jim Luna from uh, Quarter Boom Productions. He's got a show coming up the 27th up in uh, up in Pearland. We'll we'll give you more about more uh, details about that. The next clip, okay, this one isn't up yet. Neither is the one we just saw. The one we just saw, it'll be up tomorrow night. For every Thursday night, we're going to put up a an interview, okay? Nice. So we got Bronco956. A very, um, he's one of those characters that, uh, boy, uh, <laughs> what is, uh, I don't know how to explain it, but he has so many people that love to watch his content. But then he has so many people that are very hateful towards him. And I asked him about it on the interview. Check it out. Ya no tienes privacidad. No, realmente no. no. Me quiero escapar a veces. Uh-huh. <laughs> Me quiero escapar y no puedo. Sí. No puedo. Yeah. No hay cámaras donde quiera y... y... Pero, como te digo, yo no me la creo realmente, pero así es. A la gente le gusta mi contenido. Uh-huh. Claro, hay personas que no les gusta, uh-huh. y, pero hay muchos que sí les gusta. Eso es lo que te iba a preguntar, porque hay veces, uh, yo, yo he puesto un post contigo y, y hay, 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 hay personas que tienen un, un coraje contra ti y un <risa> odio, y yo no lo entiendo, Bronco, uh-huh. porque, pues, ¿a quién estás lastimando tú? ¿A nadie? Uh-huh. Tú, sabes, tú estás haciendo... Esto fue algo que se te cayó en, en las manos. Sí, en las manos. Te llegó a ti una fama que nunca esperabas. <risa> y pues, este, tú sabes, lo aceptaste. Y sí. decidiste a correr con él. Todo lo que da. A todo y, se puede y, y yo no entiendo. Yo a veces que te, te, te estoy defendiendo en el, ah. en el social media. Oye, pues qué chingados te hizo el bronco. <risa> sí. ¿A qué le tienen tanto pinche coraje? Ajá. Dejen lo que... Ese, ese entretenimiento, es entretenimiento. Es la vida de él, ¿verdad? Sí, ¿Con, ¿Qué piensas de esos que, te, que te, te odian con mucho coraje y ni te conocen? Pues fíjate, Jim. Eh, si ellos... Si sí, ellos tienen un, un odio ¿verdad? grande, como dices tú. 
Oh boy, uh, that that interview is pretty awesome too, man. El Bronco 956. I can't to wait the, to see that yeah, one. Yeah, to get to the guy behind all of the, uh, you know, it's all, it's all fun and games, but who's the real guy? The he, guy behind the meme. Mm -hmm. the, the thing about it is, <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, we're all human, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're all human. And it just freaks me out. Like, I mean, it's okay to make fun of him. But to like really like I've seen comments that are like like hateful, bro. Yeah, super hateful comments. I mean, calmate, bro. Yeah. You know. Son haters como tan hating con el Lucky Joe, no? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I did an amazing interview with Lucky Joe. He actually cried on the show. We're going to show you a little part because we talked about his dad and his upbringing. And this one's going to be up next Thursday, Okay. It's not up yet. It's next Thursday. Every and, and we're ahead, so check this one out. You know your uh, your dad passed away recently. Mm -hmm. Wasn't long ago. What kind of relationship did you have with your jefito, bro? Man, it was it was tough, man. The younger years, my dad was very hard, bro. My dad was uh, old school cholo, man. Old school, long hair. Tattoos everywhere, you know. Uh, I remember growing up as a kid, my uncles used to come to the house and say, Hey, Nitch, Elegia Nitch. His name's Oliverio. Elegia, hey, Nitch, acá está este vato. This guy's giving me problems, man. I don't know. Y que, ahí va mi dad, de peleonero, bro. Ahí va mi dad, y arreglaba todo el pedo, y, y you know, he'd settle the situation for his brothers or whatever, and then he'd come back. But no fallaba, bro. Every weekend, one of my uncles was getting into a fight or something. Ya iba mi jefe, you know. But growing up as a kid, he was really tough, man. He was a tough love, you know. Déjalo que llore. Déjalo que llore. No llora sangre. Let him cry. He's not going to cry blood. I'd get in trouble. My, mom, my mom spanked me. I'd be crying. And he'd say, let him cry. Let him cry. ¿Sabes qué, vete. ¿Sabes qué, vato? Vete, vete al cuarto, vato. No te quiero ir. And I'd be crying in my roomie. No te oigo. Llora más recio. And I'd let it out, bro. <sighs> I'd, I'd, I'd más recio. And he, he was just a tough man, bro. And growing up through my teens, he wasn't very supportive of my music. You know, no le gustaba para nada. And he would always tell me, esa música no te va a dejar nada, bro. No te va a dejar nada, vato. And my mom would always say the opposite, you know. Déjalo, he's going to do good. He's going to... No, hombre, no le va a dejar nada esa música. Now, fast forward to when I joined Frijoles Románticos. Man, that interview is going to be amazing. I'm going to drop that one next Thursday, okay? Every Thursday, tomorrow night, I have a sit-down with Roberto Pulido, and I have what I'm doing with these uh, guys and girls, these artists and, and people of interest. I'm going in with five questions in solid, I mean solid five questions. No, este, vamos a nomás hablar, este un rollo, este el otro. I'm going in with a plan, you know? I want to know these things that I think a lot of the audience would want to know. And, uh, and they've turned into very honest answers, man. And so uh, what you have to do is if you have an Android phone, okay, all you have to do is go to the hashtag PBT page. And where it says subscribe, it says join, right? There's a little join button. So on the Androids, you're capable of doing that. Very simple. You just hit the join and it'll tell you how to join, right? And you become a member, a gold member, right? Now, if you have an iPhone, no, hombre, pinche iPhone is a problem, my madre, carnal. The whole production? I heard the reason that iPhone doesn't make it that simple is because they want a cut of what Google's getting out of people that are joining and all that. It's, kind of, it's money. So with the iPhone, it's a little bit different. This is what you got to do. And it's, it's, if you si no quieres avatar con el iPhone, ve para tu computer and do it on the computer, right? On your laptop or on your desktop. But if you don't have that and you have an iPhone, okay, 
you're going to hit the safari. You know that little, uh, when you want to go to the internet, to the search engine, you hit that little, I think it's like a little blue thing or a little world, right? A little compass. Mm -hmm. It's a compass. Is that what it is? So you hit that and it opens up and then in the, where the URL goes, you, you type in YouTube.com, right? And it takes you to YouTube, but it's like the, you know, phone friendly, right? So where the URL is, where you typed you know, youtube.com next to that little box, you know, that little long box, there's a small a and a big a, right? Just look for that. Mm -hmm. You hit that. Yes. And a box pops up and it'll say desktop version. Request desktop website. Yeah. Request desktop website. Yep. You hit that mm -hmm. and then you get the... The YouTube, like if you were on a computer. Yes. Okay. Then you have to go on the search of the com of uh, YouTube and type hashtag PVT. Okay. And then search. Isale hashtag. And it'll be real small because it's like the whole page of the, of, the, of the computer on your phone. And then you'll see the PVT pop up and you'll see the, you know, our logo. You click on that. Boom, our page pops up and you'll see the join button. Now, you could probably like enlarge it by going like this on your phone, you know, like you spread it. You can. And then se hace más grande little join button. Pegale ahí al join button and you can, you're can you able to do it. But the easiest thing for you iPhone users is just go to a computer or go to a desktop and join because you do not want to miss these interviews. These are going to be some of the best interviews in the market. All right. I guarantee you. The ones that I've got in the box already are amazing. Orale. So become a member today. Okay? Orale. And we're going to have plenty of content for you. Aquí con hashtag PBT. But if you don't want to become a member, we still do this Wednesday night show. All right? Yeah, somebody was asking um, on the chat right now, are you all still going to do the live Wednesday show? Oh, yeah. And I responded, yes, of course. Yeah, this is this is just extra content for for members only. You know, people that mm -hmm. want to support us a little more than just watching us for free. You know, you don't want to help us out. Now, what we're going to do with this, or we've already got another little studio that we're going to be putting together so we can always do our interviews there with the artist. And then we'll be able to travel and do interviews, sit down interviews, because I have a little mobile you know, podcasting. I can go to Corpus. I can go to, I'm, I'm thinking of going to Corpus and going to, to Q Productions. And maybe I can sit down with Mr. Quintanilla. That'd be awesome. So those are some of my goals. All right. So hopefully we'll get some done. And in San Antonio, we can go to San Antonio and sit down with a whole bunch of people. We can actually do three interviews in one, one shot. You know, if I have five questions for each guy or girl. So become a member today, man. Cause we're, and then we're going to be, at, a, at events and festivals and we're going to upload all the behind the scenes on our members only okay now this you'll be getting free every Wednesday night next next week we got two shows okay Tuesday night tenemos Amanda Solis she is a Selena tribute she's with a Selena tribute band and of course next Tuesday is Selena's birthday so it's going to be awesome and then uh, next Wednesday we have Savannah Vosh she'll be here with us también. so we have two girls coming in next week and we'll be doing them live but Thursday night expect exclusive members only stuff all right with hashtag pvt if you remember you get to see them so uh esta semana que pasó este fin de semana no hicimos nada actually we stayed home and, and watched wrestlemania man what did you all think of wrestlemania dude <clears throat> um <laughs> i thought it was weak i don't know uh you know as a wrestle as a wrestling fan and you guys i mean you guys are more wrestling fans than me. You guys have been seeing wrestling forever, right? And um, I remember the grand, the grandeur, you know, like the spectacle, the uh -huh. the magic, you know, like the the flying from the sky, and you know, like the the you know the crazy stuff like that. I didn't see nothing like that, you know. I didn't see nothing that caught my eye, you know. Well, I mean, I think the on the second night. Seth Rollins had a bunch of, like a New Orleans trip parade. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, it was over the top. His uh, his outfit, his getup. Yeah, and um, and and uh, the guy that he wrestled, uh, he, he brought in like the Irish or Scottish, you know, right? Or yeah. Irish or Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre, Scotland. Yeah, yeah. I, that was a great way to start the second night, man. It was. The Highlanders <laughs> les dijeron los Highlanders yeah. se llaman esos vatos. They, they, that was pretty. That was pretty cool. That was cool. Pero it's still not. 
like you know, like the rock's grandeur. interest, bro. Come on, the rock's interest. Let, interest? let, 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 it, let it finish. Go ahead. What is what is the the, the critique it's not of the, all the, the grandeur of mm -hmm. that that what used to be? You know, yeah. like. Uh, like Shawn Michaels, you know, flying mm -hmm. from the sky, you know, like okay. shit like that. Like, no, I didn't see nothing like that. I mean, it was, it was, you know what it was? It was like a, like another, like a, like a, like a raw, okay. but yeah. a little bit, a little bit better. A little bit better. Okay. What, well, I'm a little bit different. I'm, I mean, I don't really look at the entrances. I look at the matches. You know, I'm more into the right. matches and how they're done and everything. Sure. What about you, Chaz? What about you? What do you Randy, think of what'd WrestleMania? You, what'd you do a one shot real quick? A what? Yes. This is the one shot. Yes, go. I'm gonna do a public service announcement. <laughs> The effects of marijuana <laughs> can severely damage the cerebrum, the cerebellum, <laughs> the neurons, the neural network, <laughs> and completely ruin the WrestleMania experience. <laughs> so please stay drug free during WrestleMania. Okay, back to the three shot. <laughs> this was easily the best WrestleMania ever. I mean, that first night with the tag team of The Rock and Roman Reigns and Cody and Seth had had a lot of drama. And then on the second night, everyone was like, Stone Cold's going to come out. Stone Cold, every no. smart mark, every nerd like me, oh, Stone Cold. And then it was The Undertaker. Uh -huh. I mean, they threw a curveball like... Nobody saw that coming. Uh -huh. There was even like a shadow coming un pelon, right? They thought it was yes, gonna be stone cold, exactly. but it wasn't. Yeah. Everything was done to perfection. And this was, as they said, part part of the triple A Triple H Paul Levesque era. And man, I, I couldn't have been more blown away. Uh the only thing I kind of didn't like was that Gunther lost. Oh yeah. Gunther. Uh, Gunther El General. That's a Spanish version. Yeah, he lost against Sami Zayn. <laughs> I know. He could have easily just demolished him. We all knew they were going well, I mean, to give it to Sami. They, they were building him up the they, whole they time. They were, yeah. But I, I thought he should have lost to like a like a, a bigger guy, you know. Uh, but anyway, it, it was easily the best WrestleMania. And uh, all the all the titles changed, didn't they? I mean, not the uh, U.S. with Paul Logan. And oh Paul yeah, Mario. Logan Paul. Logan Paul. Yeah, you know which uh, what part I loved the best was when Ron Killings got the belts, bro. You know, oh yeah, -Truth. the tag team. Oh, yeah. yeah, dude, and, that was a huge pop because and then, and underdog. Then, and then he's so funny, dude, because he's like he's trying to tag in. Hey, no, it's and, totally then, and then they tag him in, and he does the freaking like the John Cena <laughs> thing, right? And then he and then he goes back to the corner, and then Miss is telling him, "This is not a tag match, you moron." <laughs> and then yet yeah, last night, or no, the night before on Monday Night Raw, um, you know, Damian Priest, like he won the. That, that was a great when he when came he out. I in. jumped out of my chair, dude. When he cashed in, yeah, you always he, forget that. Oh yeah, they're gonna cash in. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah, yeah everybody forgets. My wife was in the bedroom, and I was like, "Holy shit!" I like, what, what, what? She comes over here like Damian Priest is gonna get it, <laughs> right? So he, they were on Monday Night Raw. They were celebrating Damian Priest and you know Rhea Ripley. Yeah, Rhea Ripley. And then he when they saw, they all lift the belts, the Ron Killings atrás de entre medio de se mete. You're not part of us, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so he says, "Well, we're gonna do a tr three on three. And then Miz says, "You're not because Ron Killing supposedly has a, an invisible friend, Little Jimmy, that you can't see." Yeah. And he goes, we, we, because he wanted to do a tag match. He goes, no, we're going to do a three on three. We, what do you mean three on three? You're not going to tell me that. Little Jimmy. Little Jimmy. Yeah, you can't see him. You can't. And at the end, it ended up being John, John Cena, Cena coming out, dude. Oh, like yeah. John Cena, bro. So I really like Ron Killings, man. He's uh, He's been around for a long time. He's 52. Yeah. I mean, he's 52. He can and he can wrestle till he's 60, probably. I mean, 70. Easily, papitas. Uh -huh. And to think that he got a tag title at the age of 52, uh, phenomenal. And yeah. uh, I, I liked the whole thing. And uh, it was it's great to hear now there was a rumor that WWE wants to start reaching out to other companies mm -hmm. because this is going to be a new era and they might work with Japan and they might work with Mexico. AEW. I don't know about that, well, but I mean, you never know. Though. You never know. You bro. never know. But they were supposedly one of Nick yeah. Khan, the guy who's in charge over there, wants to work with. I, and I hope that's true. Yeah. It's like in the old days, right? When we used to see the great Muda and 
yeah. and mil mascaras and all that stuff. Yeah, different territories. Yeah. And they would trade like you know, you know we'll when, give you when, great when they want to give one wrestler a break, they'll send him to AEW and then he'll come back. And yeah. I think it would work for everybody. Dude. Uh, it's a win-win. Yeah, it's a win-win. Yeah, and, man. Uh, that'd be interesting, bro. It was. Uh, so what did The Rock give? You know, first of all, I don't like <laughs> Cody Rhodes. I, I, I mean, I just, I mean, I, I like He's Roman. Too vanilla. I like Roman Reigns as a as a as a champion a lot better. Mm -hmm. It seemed like they they gave it to Cody the Lastima or something. The Lastima. Bro. That's what I. That's it the was feeling forced. that I've been getting, bro. I'm it just not going to be able to get into it, bro. I, I don't know why, but you know, The Rock came out on Monday night. And tried the belt, and they traded belts. <laughs> this he, is awkward. I want to try it. I want to. I want to feel that belt because he's won all the belts except that one. Mm -hmm. So, and then he says, "Don't ever break my heart again." And then he gives uh, Cody Rhodes something in the hand, and he says, "Don't open it. You know what it is." And so everybody's like, "What the hell did he give Cody Rhodes?" Right? Yeah. And why did he try the belt? Is he going to come back for it? So, will The Rock win a belt at the age of fifty-five, fifty-six? Yeah. Uh, and if he does, he's going to have to stay on. I mean, look at Brock Lesnar. If The Rock wins the belt, he doesn't have to be there every week, dude. Mm -hmm. Just the pay-per-views in a couple of weeks before. I so. think he gave Cody a business card for Dr. T. I think, <laughs> uh, I, think I know. <laughs> yeah, because he needs a, He's too scrawny, he's dude. Well, I, mean, I mean, when they gave it to, to Eddie Guerrero and to Chris Benoit and... You know, those guys, they're at least built, you and know? They were short, but they were, like, stacked Stocky. and jacked. Yeah. And very, uh, and a lot more talented at wrestling than, than Cody, Cody Rhodes, dude. Yeah. yeah. I think I know what they gave him. Uh -oh. I think I think they gave him a, a watch that used to belong to his dad. Oh, really? And, uh, and his dad pawned it back in the day because he wanted to pay for Cody Rhodes' acting school mm -hmm. so that he can get into wrestling. Because wrestling is a lot of acting también. You have to have mic skills and stuff, right? Sí. So he wanted to pay for Cody's um, acting school so he can go and get into wrestling, and he sold that watch. Oh, really? And uh, I think uh, Triple H, The Rock, and I don't know who else pitched in so that they could buy that watch back and yeah. give it to Cody. So I think that's what he, he gave them there. So what's going to happen to Roman Reigns and uh, and Paul Heyman and uh, the Bloodline? We're going to come back, baby. And and uh, well, they did sign uh, another Samoan, Solo Sikoa. What happened? They to him? they they signed Jacob Fatu, mm -hmm. which is another cousin, and he could be the one that they rally around or like a new addition because he he was officially signed. So that tells me that the bloodline is not going away if they're signing, no. you know, more guys. Yeah, and as a matter of fact, when they were talking about the production, because because all the production and the camera thing, um, they have it in a trailer outside, right? Mm -hmm. And they mentioned that one of the producers and his last name was Fatu as well. Mm -hmm. So those guys are all over the business, mm -hmm. you know that 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 bloodline. So so. I mean, Roman still has his rematch clause, doesn't he? I mean, I don't know, bro. I mean, was he gonna? Cause, man, he looked amazing, dude. He looked good. He looked amazing. Oh, you're in my mouth, way. And that's because I thought he was weak at yeah. first. Yeah. You think he tiene leukemia, no? You think he tiene leukemia, el vato? Pues está flaquito la cara, por eso con la shirt se mira como flaquito. Pero ya que se quitó la shirt, y estaba. I mean, not like Roman from back like two, three years ago. I mean, he was. He you said know. he's going to be taking oral medication for leukemia for the rest of his life, so it's never going away. Damn. But he'll always be able to wrestle. Now, maybe not with the crazy schedule of, you know, uh, 300 dates a year, mm -hmm. but no, he, he said it's never going away. He's always going to be on medication, but he'll be able to wrestle. Do you think they'll start something with him and Seth Rollins since Seth came out as a shield, like at the end of WrestleMania? Remember? Mm -hmm. It was the shield. That's how they started him and Roman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what was the name of the other guy? Uh, Dean Ambrose. Dean Ambrose. Dean Ambrose. Yeah. What? So they're saying that it might be Seth and and Roman to start a new program. But that would be cool. I don't I know what Paul Heyman's gonna. gonna what, what's Paul Heyman gonna do without the belt, carrying the belt and giving it? To, you know what I mean, right? <laughs> yeah, it's a whole production. Uh, yeah, <laughs> dude. And, uh, My travel like chief. This, and My travel chief. He was amazing, bro. I mean, uh, the, I mean, I loved watching Paul Heyman. His faces. Did you see his uh, speech at the Hall of Fame? Yeah, yeah. That yeah. was phenomenal. The ECW. The ECW. That was cool. And right? then they brought Bubba Ray out on uh, as a referee on one of the oh, matches too, yeah. bro. Oh, yeah. Bring out the tables and shit like that. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it, man. I enjoyed WrestleMania. I saw both little in, that, was, uh, that was pretty yeah, old school. Yeah, that was pretty dude. cool. Yeah, man. So, all right. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, 
I don't know if you all are into wrestling, but we are, and I hope you. <laughs> and I, mean, I wanted to add something. Go ahead. Yeah, no. uh, speaking of marijuana usage, I mean, two of the the huge, biggest the uh, rappers, the rebuttal. Yeah, yeah two yes. of the biggest <laughs> rappers and marijuana users and icons in in you know in, in pop culture were there. Yes, Little Wayne and Snoop Dogg. Yeah, and you're forgetting R V. D. RVD oh, was in the Hall of there, Fame, yeah. and he's been a huge endorser. He is huge. And he was on High Times Magazine. Edibles like, and shit he sells. Way back in the day. Yeah, and he was, he was you know, one of the first uh, first uh, uh, celebrity, like, you know, to be out. dudes to get into that kind of uh, uh, business. But, um, but yeah, man, it was cool seeing Snoop Dogg there, and one of the announcers said... He's so funny. Man. He's funny, and one of the announcers said... There's a strange, uh, he, he's like, there's a strange uh, herb uh, aroma in the air. And I was like, well, of course. I mean, <laughs> Snoop Dogg is in the house. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. He's got that gin and juice, man, that, uh, that product. Sipping on gin and juice. Yeah. So That's the, smart. the statement is pro wrestling is now cool again. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Vin, uh, Vince McMahon is gone. Oh, yeah. He uh, owns less than 5% of the company. And, and the guys that are running it were Attitude Era. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. So I mean, I'm expecting nothing but great things, you know, because I'm a big fan of the Attitude Era. Yeah, I- I'm a big fan, and so they've got the Rock. He's uh, the Rock is worth eight hundred million dollars, bro. Damn. He's got the Universal Football League going on right now, which was mm-hmm. the XFL and the uh, the other league that they had, uh, the USFL. Mm-hmm. They they merged, so now they're doing that, and uh, he's up, he's one of the head guys there. He's head of TKO. He's on the board. Which is the owners of WWE and UFC. And UFC. Right? And he's got a movie career. Mm-hmm. And now he's handling, you know, he's, he's become a wrestler as well again. I mean, I can just imagine The Rock's fucking schedule, dude. I mean, si nosotros que tenemos un poquito, carnal. Imagínate si tienes que hacer todo eso, carnal. No, that guy's a beast, bro. No. He's going to become a billionaire, dude. Yep. Fácil. Soon. Yeah. He's close. Mm-hmm. McMahon was a billionaire. I'm gonna mention something that that uh, that we didn't touch bases on, and it also has to do with you know like fighting and stuff. And Sal in the house brought it up. Shout out to Sal in the house in the in the chat zone, and he says Tyson versus Logan Paul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. What do y'all think Ojalá about que that? Le a chinga Mike Tyson al vato, so, uh, Fuck yeah, that's it, what I was thinking. But he's gonna want to knock Mike Tyson out, man. I mean, the last time Mike Tyson fought was against Roy Jones Jr. But they had the, I think they had the gear, the headgear. No, mm-hmm. they didn't. They didn't. No, I know. I they thought did. they did, man. Didn't they? I no. thought they did. I don't. I don't remember that. If they can tell us in the chat. Well, I mean, I, I remember that. Um, Akela, Roy Jones Jr. He looked gassed, bro. Like he wasn't. He was well, out of shape. Well, bro. Roy Jones said that even though that Tyson was whatever the weight he was, he's like, man, this guy feels way. More than the official weight, just because he's so strong. So uh, I don't remember the the helmets. If you guys do in the chat zone, please let us know. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, we got something there, baby. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out really quick to uh, Sebastian Silva or Sebastian Silva. It says, "Welcome to PBT Gold Member." All right. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So awesome. now we know that when they subscribe, they're gonna it's gonna come out there in the yes. chat zone. Thank yeah, I think there, there's a little mic, a gold microphone that they get every time they comment mm-hmm. on the chat. It's yes. gonna be coming out because that that officially shows everybody that you're a gold oh, member. Nice. Well, real gold quick, member. real quick, then let's give those shout outs. Uh, there Jack, was some. Uh, yeah, Jack, so do go ahead and do that. Uh, the super chat. The right. super yeah, chat. And then yeah. there's super stickers. There's too. two super chats. Well, the first super chat was Alex Aldape, and uh, he says, "Saludos from Ruskin, Florida. Would you would like if Rock could say hi to my dad, Joe Aldape? Would you ever consider doing an interview with ex Intocable bajo quinto player Daniel Sanchez? Yeah, I, I've actually reached out to him." And we uh, we were we were communicating, uh, but uh, it just never panned out. It never panned out. I also got a call from uh, Este Lupe de Goyado, el hermano de Sergio de Grupo Control, mm. and they had a big falling out. Lupe is using the the name Control, mm-hmm. and so I talked to him. He he wanted to know about my bus to see if I wanted to sell it. Oh, okay. and uh, so that's what we're t- that's what he called me for. I hadn't. He actually contacted us on the on the hashtag PBT phone, right? Yes, uh-huh, yeah. And then my wife, she she gave me the screenshot, and I I called him, and I hadn't talked to him in a long time, so I'm planning to do a one on one 
with Lupe. I told him I was thinking of doing it tomorrow night, but he's uh, he's in Louisiana. Is Lupe the one who lives in San Bene? When uh, his daughter plays? No, that that's Sergio. Okay. Yeah, because I think they, there's a little house there on the side of the expressway in be, between Harlingen and La Feria, and there's the buses there. Mm -hmm. I don't know who lives there either. But no, Sergio was the one that we had on the show back when we were living on Maine. And uh, we talked about it, and I asked him, hey, hablas con tu hermano, con Lupe? <laughs> and, uh, well, yeah, no, no, but, pero habla, no, 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 but para dijiste la verdad, no hablamos. Yeah, you know, I, I, he finally I, 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 said that. So there's and, and now what really surprised me was that Lupe is using the the name Control. Mm -hmm. So I haven't spoken with Sergio. I'll see if he's so. If there's two controls. It's gonna be I don't know what's going on there, Yikes. bro. So I need. There's a, no. There's a lot of descontrol going on right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So <laughs> so Lupe, when he comes back, we're gonna we're gonna connect, and then I'm gonna do a one on one sit down with five questions with him, and of course that would be cool. It's, you know, know it's just like heavy metal. Like there's two queens, uh huh. Like two rats, two great whites, two great whites, and like it never ends. Dude, dude, but I just gave him a great idea. Descontrol is a great name for a See, band, man. That is yeah. true. That's not uh, bad. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of Great White, uh, they played in Bandera this past weekend because they oh, had yeah? that three that three day Eclipse uh, festival. Oh, okay, we we're supposed to play their Whiskey D. Uh, so on Friday night they had Great White and uh, Dokken. Oh, oh nice. and and Great and, and Jack was, it's Jack Russell, the original singer. Man, he, his back is all messed up. Well, he came out in a wheelchair. He's uh. so cool. And I heard that there was nobody, bro. It was really, Damn. really dead, bro. And, Dokken. you know, you mentioned Dawkin. I, I don't know if you guys, Jax and, and Rocky, Don Dawkin, he worked, he did a year of therapy just so he could do this. Just so he could lift his arm. His oh, arm is, shit. his arm does not work. And the most he can do is, is hold a glass. His arm is. Those two bands were totally out of it, man. Yeah. And so when you said Great White and Dawkins, I thought, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> the two <laughs> most handicapped guys. <laughs> well, they played on that Friday night. And, oh uh, my God. And, you know, it was. Uh, and then uh, on, on Sunday, they had the Bellamy Brothers and uh, and some other band. Uh, oh, and J Gary P. Nunn and King Fo. And I got video of it, and it was like, man, it was nobody, bro. Nah. But but on the other side, over here in Eagle Pass, the show we were promoting in Eagle Pass for the Eclipse with uh, Parker McCollum, Ramon Ayala, Bobby Pulido, Gary Hobbs, Kevin Fowler, Randy Rogers. Bro, it was at the Kickapoo because mm -hmm. they were going to be at the park in Eagle Pass. They got taken over by the National Guard in the state. Okay. All right? So they moved, They had to move it to Kickapoo, the outside parking lot. Pack, bro. I mean, it was a big success. So, of course, they were they were promoting with hashtag PVT. Yeah, of course. They had actually asked me to MC, and it was like the week before or two weeks before. And I said, hey, yeah, we're wondering if you'd like to MC and this and that. And I looked at the, let me see my calendar. WrestleMania. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a real WrestleMania fan right there. Wrestling fan. <laughs> hey, Speaking of WrestleMania, oh, you got it? Real quick, shout out to Javier Garcia. Thank you for the super chat. He says, hey, WrestleMania 17 was the greatest one. And there'll never be another one like it. I don't remember off the top of my head, uh, Javier, who was in WrestleMania 17 but yeah those years of those 17 18 19 and 20 those are like the attitude era years mm -hmm. but those wrestlemanias were awesome hey um uh, w did they say where the next one's gonna be because usually at the end of a wrestlemania it says next year's uh next year's uh, I, location I, I had heard mathis <laughs> Mathis. No, I, I think there was a rumor that it was going to be vegas it's going to be at the ben bolt stadium right <laughs> on the way to alice este. are we frozen we're frozen we're frozen oh yeah oh, we're good we're no, good are we good yeah we're good. yeah, yeah. We're, okay, we're, yeah. We're on. all right uh yeah. let us know if you can see us javier morin my internet is lagging and clem priority roofing tambien it's buffering yeah johnny borges said it sound the house dalia dalia oh well, yeah there's several well let's uh you, you want to take a break and re re Restart the because we still got a couple of things, or we just keep going. We can keep going. All right. Yeah, they say it's stop buffering. So we were talking also about. Uh, I was talking to Lucky Joe. He was uh, asking for money on the internet on social media for a bus, and um, he asked for twenty five thousand dollars. 
and he surpassed the $25,000 already. Damn. So, congratulations to Lucky Joe. But, boy, did he say he got some hate for it, bro. I mean, as a matter of fact, we got a picture of the... We I always go to Tejano Nation, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to get find out all the stuff going on with the Tejano world, Tejano Nation is a place. And uh, Lucky Joe, it says, surpasses 25000 crowdfunding goal in less than a week thanks nice. to both fans and critics and uh it goes on to say award-winning Tejano artist Lucky Joe whose fans rallied behind his online fundraiser for a tour bus announced during a Facebook live on Monday night that he had surpassed his $25,000 goal the two-time Latin Grammy nominated artist signed to the Freddie Records label appeared over to overcome with emotion as he told his fans that they could ease with all donations as his total was more than $27,000. So what I told I told Lucky, what you need to do, bro, is uh, you probably need to delete all the previous posts because people are going to see like the post where you're barely starting and they're going to send money thinking that you're barely starting. So because not everybody sees it and you know what I mean? And then they start seeing it. So what he needs to do is probably delete all the previous posts so they don't clean it out. He's already reached his goal. And that way, people won't keep sending the money, even though that's a nice thing, right? <laughs> yeah. So, how much do you think they're gonna pull out? Uh, you know, when he takes the money out of Cash App, que le van a quitar unos two, three thousand dollars. A huevo, fácil. More fácil than that. arriba, a huevo como unos mil, dos mil bolas. Yeah. yeah. Es lo que te estaba diciendo hace rato. Te, te dije, oye, Dad, imagínate cuando haga Cash Out. Yeah. El pinche percentage. Uh huh. No, hombre, si cuando sacas cien dólares son como a dollar something. Sí. Imagine. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, also, um, I mean, I was the f I think I was the first one to acknowledge the rumor of Bobby Pulido and the gay rumor, right? It was here when we had him. I remember I went through his Wikipedia because it was in the Wikipedia. And so, you know, he, he, he quashed the rumor. He said, you know, he told us what happened. He had met a couple. Him and his wife had met a couple at the island. They were from Monterey, and they started hanging out. And then he went on a trip with a guy. And everybody started saying that they were having an affair or something like that because the guy apparently was gay and he didn't even know that because he had a wife and stuff like that. So that was the story that Bobby told us on the show when we uh, approached him about that rumor. Well, there's another rumor. Uh, Bobby Pulido denies rumors, takes legal action. Tejano star refutes allegations of a relationship with a Mexican reporter. So we go to the article. It's on Tejano Nation. Uh, Bobby Pulido has recently found himself at the center of a rumor that has been circulating on social media uh, for several weeks. The rumor suggested that the Latin Grammy winner was involved in a romantic relationship with Mexican reporter Javier Alatorre. Pulido has vehemently denied these allegations and has taken legal action against those responsible for spreading the rumor. In a statement shared through his representative to Tejano Nation, Pulido said, those who know me know who I am. I'm a family man, and it's unfair. I am taking legal action and offering a reward to anyone who can help us find whoever is responsible. This statement was reiterated in a multimedia interview where he emphasized, I hadn't found out. I don't know who Javier Alvatore is. I live in the United States. My public relations told me this. Besides, I like women, not men. I already found out that there is a supposed, a supposed Fernando JM who's the one who leaked everything because he was very bored. So, unfortunately, you know, I spoke with Bobby and we were talking about how easy it is to start rumors on the internet nowadays. Before, for that kind of stuff, you had to, you know, go to the Enquirer. But there's, people are wanting clickbait and stuff like that. So, I asked him if he wanted to sit down and do an interview and talk about it. And uh, Bobby said that he will sit down with me and we will discuss uh, the whole uh, situation. Uh, but uh, that is something we'll be looking at because he is taking legal action against that person in Mexico. And from what I hear in Mexico, if you, you can go to jail for it, you can go to jail for it. Not like over here, you know, over here they don't yeah. do shit to you, but over there. You know, Rock, you should just show pictures to Bobby of men in like, you know, dressed as firemen and stuff. And see if it starts sweating. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. a classic test. You know? I mean, like if his heart rate goes up. What if we start sweating and our heart rate goes up? Well, <laughs> I mean, hey. 
Yeah. It is gay detectors on Amazon. Yeah. I was You're going to hear wow. in two days. I know Rally has an Amazon account. Is it, is it, is it like, a, like, a, like a Ghostbusters thing? <laughs> Starts beeping. Right. Oh, my God. It's going crazy. Uh, hey, and you know, Javier La Torre is not your everyday local news, dude. He's the main 